chapter 21 of the book of Numbers, Israel has three conquests in which they're victorious. They defeat, defeat the Canaanites, the Amorites. And, uh, they weren't even going to battle the Amorites. They just asked for permission to pass through their land. The king uh, uh, set the army in array against Israel, and Israel whooped them. And then uh, they defeated uh, Bashan. But in between defeating the Amorites and the Bashan, Israel, as Israel was subject to do, began to murmur and complain. Get to uh, bitterness against God. And God sent fiery serpents, and they bit them. Many of Israel died. They didn't die in battle. They died because of their attitude towards God. But God told Moses to take a brazen serpent, put it on a pole, and lift it up. He said all that would look to that serpent would live. Those that had too much pride to look, they died. But those that trusted in what God said and looked to what was hanging on that pole, they lived. It's a wonderful picture. We've all been bitten by sin. Sin will kill us, for the wages of sin is death. But God was kind one day, and he made his son to come to this world and die on an old rugged cross. Brass is always a picture of judgment. Jesus was judged for our sins. Our sins were laid upon him. He was beaten for our iniquities. Uh, he bled and died because... Uh, we were guilty before God. He became our sacrifice and our substitute. And those of us that uh, uh, will not uh, uh, let pride drag us off into hell, but will look to Jesus and trust in him uh, as our only means of salvation, will live. Uh, what a blessing. Find all that in Numbers 21, but I'm not going to preach on that. I'd like to. Uh, chapter number 22 begins, And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side, Jordan, by Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us, uh, as the ox licketh, licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at, the, at that time. He sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, uh, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me, uh, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail, uh, that we may smite them, uh, and that I might, may drive them out of the land. Uh, for I wot that he, he whom thou blessed is blessed, blesses is blessed, uh, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. Uh, and the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. Uh, and they came unto Balaam and spake unto him the words of Balak. Uh, and he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, uh, and as the Lord shall speak unto me. Uh, and the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. Uh, and God came to Balaam and said, What men are these with th thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent unto me, saying, uh, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which cover the face of the earth. Uh, come now, curse me them, peradventure I shall be able to overcome them, and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them, thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We're thankful that your people are blessed. Lord, if we would truly embrace and behold the blessings of God in our life, revival would break out. We'd become truly thankful for the goodness of God. We'd see a great move of God in these days. Lord, I realize many of your people today have labored hard this week. 
They have faced uh, obstacles. They have faced stress. They have faced the world, the flesh, and the devil. This morning, they have found themselves in the house of God. Lord, I, I realize that many of them, their minds uh, uh, are racing for things that will lie ahead even this week. But I pray for the next few minutes we'd be able to center our, center our minds and our heart on the things of God. I pray that, God, you'd speak to us this morning. Lord, we don't deserve you to speak to us, but I pray that you would speak to us in spite of us. I pray for a hedge about this place. I pray you'd bind the powers of hell. We certainly plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ over this place. And, Father, we ask and implore and plead for the sweet Holy Ghost of God to do, be allowed to do his office work. I pray that he'd speak to hearts. Uh, he'd draw sinners uh, unto an altar of repentance. He'd draw uh, the saints of God to a, uh, an altar of revival. And I pray that, God, you would do a great work, one that could not be attributed to man. Now, God, you know what we stand in need of. I pray that, Lord, you'd bless as only you can. Be with those that are sick. Be with little Chloe. I pray you'd touch her. I pray for Miss Tammy and Miss Vanessa, their families. You'd comfort them. I pray uh, for Miss Melissa's brother. You'd touch him. Uh, and God, I pray for Miss Jackie. You'd touch her. Uh, I pray for the revival going on down there in Cannon Mountain. Continue to bless. Uh, I pray for the meetings coming up up at Fellowship and down at Victory. You'd bless them. Uh, but Father, for the next few minutes, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, sit down amongst us. Uh, have your will away. We'll bless you for it. Uh, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen and amen. Israel has found themselves uh, 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 pitching their tent uh, in uh, Moab, the plains of Jordan. And the king of Moab, he's very distressed. Now I want you to notice the enemy's anxiousness. Look again at verse 3. And Moab was so afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. Moab said unto the elders of Midian, uh, Thou shalt this company lick up all that are around us, uh, as the ark licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zabor, was king of the Moabites at that time. Uh, they were anxious because of God's people. Uh, if there's any indictment against the church today, uh, the world's not anxious about us. The world ought to be distressed about what's going on here today. The world ought to be concerned that God is meeting with his people uh, and they're not right with God. Uh, the world ought to be concerned when they look at the people of God uh, and see the hand of God and the blessings of God uh, and realize that God is for us. Uh, and the Bible said if God be for us, who could be against us? Uh, uh, the world ought to be concerned uh, uh, that the gospel's going forth uh, and that people are being born again uh, and the devil the devil ought to be concerned uh, that he's losing the grip on souls he wants to drag off to hell uh, uh, because of what the church is doing. Uh, but can I say, um, the churches I'm in and the church even I pastor, uh, seems like the ones that are distressed are inside the church and not outside. We got all the world on our mind. That's why God don't meet with us. We ought not be concerned about them. They ought to be concerned about us. We ought not be concerned about what's going on this week. They ought to be concerned about us. Uh, I, I mentioned Cannon Mountain. They're going into their fifth week of revival, and I dare say, I dare say, uh, if God shows up, we got revival meeting coming up uh, uh, June 10th, uh, and if God shows up and strong conviction hits this place, uh, I wonder, uh, will you put your plans on hold? Uh, would you put your shopping on hold? Uh, would you put your trips on hold? Uh, would you put your ball games on hold uh, would you put everything on hold uh, for the chance and the opportunity to meet with almighty God uh, I wonder uh, uh, what would happen if we go two weeks uh, three weeks, uh, four weeks uh, five weeks uh, I wonder what would happen uh, uh, you know why it doesn't happen uh, because we're the ones distressed Amen. we don't have to wait till June to have meeting We can have a meeting right now. Amen. We see the enemy's anxiousness. No one notice their action. Look at verse 5. I'm going somewhere. Hang with me. He sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, 
which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Uh, behold, they cover the face of the earth, uh, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, uh, for they are too mighty for me. Uh, peradventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, uh, that I might drive them out of the land. For I wot uh, that he whom thou blessest is blessed, uh, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. Uh, uh, listen, their action was uh, they sent to Balaam. Uh, by the way, Balaam was a prophet to be hired. Uh, uh, Balaam was a hireling. He was not a man of God. Uh, uh, can I say this? Uh, Jude even talks about the heir of Balaam. Uh, later in this chapter, uh, uh, God speaks to Balaam through an ass. Uh, I mean, you got to be pretty wicked for, uh, uh, as the Bible calls, a dumb uh, animal. The dumb ass spoke to Balaam to try and straighten him out. Uh, uh, he's a, a man known. Uh, he can come uh, and come show up at your place and bless uh, or curse. Uh, and so they've sent uh, a king's ransom down there uh, uh, to get this wicked prophet uh, uh, to come and bless them. Uh, their action was, uh, I will uh, retaliate against the people of God with their own prophet. Uh, can I say, uh, the world's retaliation is their own religions, uh, their own cults, uh, their own own uh, so-called movements. Uh, uh, listen, uh, if God gets to moving, uh, you won't be jumping up and down and washing windows. Uh, you'll be prostrate on your face before Almighty God, uh, realizing He is holy uh, and we are not, uh, and desire His presence in our midst. Uh, the world always thinks money's the answer. Can I say what the answer is, is a move of God. Amen. We see the enemy's anxiousness, we see their action, but notice the answer from God. Look at verse number 12. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them, thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Hmm? God said, Thou shalt not. Now listen, I'm not the brightest light bulb in the bunch, but I do know this, when God says, Thou shalt, you better. When He says, Thou shalt not, you better not. Mm. And by the way, if you go study all this, God's one spoke to Balaam. Balaam didn't even have a chance to inquire to God. But I'm interested in this thought this morning. I'm interested in verse number 9. And God came unto Balaam and said... What men are these with thee? I'll preach on this thought for a little while this morning. I want to preach on it matters who you run with. God said, What men are these with thee? Hmm? Then in verse 12, God said, Thou shalt not go with them. It does matter who you run with. Can I say that? God is questioning him. Why does he have these Moabites in his presence? Uh, and then God said, uh, Hey, you don't go with that crowd. Uh, and can I say, there's some crowds we don't need to go with today. Uh, uh, we don't need to go with this uh, uh, recovering fundamentalist crowd. Uh, uh, listen, I'm not recovering from anything. Uh, I was lost and on my way to hell. Uh, and my old granddaddy got to preaching one night. Uh, and I realized I needed to be saved. Uh, and I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and saved me. Uh, been 50 years. Uh, he saved me. Uh, he changed me. Uh, he's been good good to me. Uh, he's been far better than me, Brother Brian, than I deserve. Uh, can I say he's met every need? Uh, he's hey, 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 he's been a great Lord to me. Uh, been a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. I do not apologize for the book I was raised on. I do not apologize for the doctrines I was raised on. I do not apologize uh, uh, for the men of God that went before me uh, that helped sh shape and mold me. Uh, I, I only esteem to be more of what they were. Uh, not apologizing for it. Huh? And I say it doesn't matter who you run with. If you're not careful, you start listening to podcasts and stuff, you'll start running with a different crowd. I'm thinking right now of a man that fell to sin, fell to sin and just like Saul, and great was the fall thereof. 
And this is what he said, Christian. Used to be one of your heroes. This is what he told me. He said, I got to find another crowd now. I don't need another crowd. Huh? I think I'm running with the right one. It does matter who you run with. Can I say this? It does matter who you run with because of the direction they may be heading. Hmm. Anybody that wants to take you away from the things of God, you don't need to run with that crowd. They're headed the wrong direction. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You need to hang out with the Lord. Hang out with the crowd that's hanging out with the Lord. He is the way. Yeah. Anybody trying to take you a different way, my dear friends, run from that crowd. There's some people headed in the wrong direction. Huh? How many of you are saved today? Not afraid to put your hand up. How many of you today say, I'm headed to heaven? Well, why would I want to head a different direction? Huh? I'm going to glory. Huh? I'm going to heaven with the hammer down, as they say. Huh? I've been having an issue. shouldn't say this, but I'm going to. I've been having an issue since Wednesday with my blood pressure. My blood pressure has been great till Wednesday. And it ain't been great. That night is bad. I put my head on the pillow. And, Brother Ron, I really... Thought I might be going to glory. And you know what I said? Lord, I, I'm just looking forward to seeing you when I get there. Huh? Why would I want to come with the crowd that puts doubt whether I'm going there? Yeah. Amen, Pastor. Huh? Tell it. Huh? I'm just trying to tell you. You don't want to run with the wrong crowd because of the direction they're headed. Listen, a lot of things that call themselves fundamental aren't fundamental anymore. I'm listening to a lot of stuff. It's nothing more than emotional cotton candy. It has no substance. Uh, Paul said, preach the word, uh, but they're not preaching the word of God. Uh, uh, they're preaching about their dog dying. They're preaching about their horse killing over. They're preaching about things that make people sad, uh, make people down, uh, or they're trying to tell you something good's going to happen to you today. Hey, uh, we don't know what a day bring it for. Job says man's days are few and full of trouble. Uh, uh, tomorrow might be you unicorns and rainbows uh, but it might be darkness I don't know uh, but one thing I know Jesus is still on the throne uh, and hey uh, he is well able to deliver us uh, there's a lot of people preaching a lot of things that aren't Bible anymore mm, better be careful who you run with it matters who you run with because of the direction they may be headed not only that but because of the distance they may take you there's some people who say, well, I'll just hang out for them, with them for a while. Never dreaming how far that they'd take them, Brother Ron. Mm. Well, I'll just start missing Sunday night service, and before long, it's been months since you've been in church. Mm. Can I say when that prodigal went to a far country... It was a far country. It was much farther than he ever dreamed. And can I say, thank the Lord he came home. But it was a farther walk coming home because he had the guilt of what he did in the far country hanging on him when he came home. It matters who you hang out with, friend. Because of the distance... They may take you. I'm praying for some to come home now. They've been gone a long time. A lot of distance between here and there. Good people. People that love God. But people that just got to listening to the wrong stuff. And they're way out there. It matters who you run with because of the distance they may take you. It matters who you run with because of the ditch you may fall in. 
Everything may be right between you and God today, but all you got to do is hang out with the wrong crowd. You might end up in a ditch. Amen. The Bible says over there in Luke 10, down about verse 30, And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed it, leaving him half dead. He went down. Can I say, whenever you start hanging out with the wrong crowd, you'll head down. And he falls among thieves. Uh, they stripped him. Uh, they wounded him. And they left him half dead. Uh, uh, he's laying there in a the ditch uh, about to die. Uh, and then uh, find that a priest comes by. Religion comes by. Religion's not interested in somebody half dead. Uh, they can't make any money off of him. Uh, uh, so religion passed on by. Uh, then a Levite comes by. A Pharisee comes by. Pharisee comes by and says, well, you got what you deserve. Served, uh, and just keeps on a going. Uh, uh, but thanks be unto God, a good Samaritan came by. Uh, and he took him uh, and he poured oil in his wounds. Uh, and he put him on his own beast and took him to an end uh, and healed him. Uh, got him healed up. Uh, and that good Samaritan's a picture of the Lord. Uh, he comes, pours oil, picture of the Holy Ghost uh, in our wounds. Uh, and he cares for us. Uh, shows us compassion, uh, takes us to the end, the church, uh, and there we get healed up. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, hey, thanks be unto God for the Lord. Uh, but hey, uh, uh, you don't have to end up in a ditch. The Lord in His long suffering might come by and help you out of the ditch, but you don't have to end up in the ditch. It'd be better to stay at the end, the church. Who you run with matters. They might lead you to a crowd that's going to strip you of everything you got and leave you half dead. Mm, I thought about this. It matters who you run with because of the darkness that may befall you. Look at verse 31 of chapter 22. The Bible says, uh, Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam. Why did the Lord have to open his eyes? Because he was in darkness. He's away from God. He disobeyed God. The Lord opened his eyes. And he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and a sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed his, down his head and fell flat on his face. Uh, and the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Uh, behold, I went out to withstand thee, uh, because thy way is perverse before me. Uh, and the ass saw me, uh, and turned from me these three times. Uh, unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee and saved her alive can I say you hang out with the wrong crowd darkness may befall you Balaam's eyes so blinded the Lord standing there before him with the sword drawn and the ass saw the Lord but not Balaam and the Lord said had not the ass moved out of the way I'd have slain you and save the ass alive. Hmm. Can I say there are some people go to an early grave because they don't get right with the Lord. Paul said he turned some over for, to the uh, to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the soul might be saved. Can I say uh, folks that continue on perpetually? I'm talking about saved folks, brother Ron, brother Adrian, that perpetually live after the flesh and will not yield to God and get to the place they're useless to God, God will put them in the grave because of their darkness. They've allowed things to blind their sight to spiritual things. God help us. All because who they ran with matters who you run with. But then can I say this? Matters who you run with because of the, 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 the displeasure the Lord may have with you. Look, verse 22, chapter 22. God brought them out of Egypt. I'm in the wrong chapter. Chapter 22, verse 22. And God's anger was kindled because he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. The anger of the Lord was kindled against him because he went with them. Can I say, Brother Ray, I don't want to make you mad at me. 
You're my friend. I don't really care about you, Charlie. I make you mad, huh? No, I'm just teasing. I don't want to make anybody mad at me. But I certainly don't want the Lord to be angry with me. And because he disobeyed God and he ran with the wrong crowd, the Lord was angry. His anger was kindled against Balaam. And can I say, matters who you run with, you don't want to displease the Lord. Can I say we all fail the grace of God every single day of our lives? And I'm thankful for 1 John 1, 9. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a blessing. But can I say, when we perpetually fail Him by disobeying Him, that angers God. I mean, He's angry with the wicked every day, but with His own children, He gets disappointed. But we don't want to make Him angry. But we can by running with the wrong crowd. It matters who you run with. Now let me say this, I'll be done. It matters who you choose to run with as pertaining to the Savior. Can I say, there's only one Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. There's none other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved other than the name of Jesus. He's the only one that will save you. This old world don't ma ma mind you talking about God. Uh, they'll, they'll sing God bless America. They'll say on our money and God we trust. Uh, hey, uh, AAA tells you you got to have a God. Uh, but you start mentioning the name of Jesus, people get a little upset. Uh, they get a little nervous. Uh, there's power in that name. Uh, hey, he's more than just God. Uh, he's the darling son of God, uh, Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Uh, there's power in his name. Uh, uh, Paul uh, warned, uh, uh, if any other person preach another gospel than the one he'd preached, uh, even if an angel from heaven uh, preaches another gospel, let him be accursed. Uh, we live in a day and age uh, where there's another Jesus being preached. Uh, there's another gospel being preached. Uh, you better stick with the Jesus of the Bible. Uh, you better speak, uh, stick with the one that's the true and living God. Uh, uh, don't put your trust uh, in anything other than the truth. Uh, it matters who you run with pertaining to the Savior. Can I say it matters uh, who you run with pertaining to the sanctuary? Not everything that calls itself a church is a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not every place where they're assembling a crowd is assembling to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it matters where you go to church. Uh, uh, listen, uh, I'm glad there's a lot of good churches in this world uh, and God's got his hand on them. Uh, and you never base a church uh, on the number of folks coming. You base the church... Uh, on the hand of God on it uh, and God's hand only be on one that's built on the truth uh, and earnestly contending the faith which was once delivered unto the saints uh, thanks be unto God uh, for true Bible believing Bible preaching churches uh, but not everything that says it's a church is a church mm. I just heard this week this blew my mind Big Doug we bought that van down there. And I was talking to the guy. And the guy was trying to convince me how much God he knew, and he didn't know nothing. You know, you, you've dealt with them people. They find out you're, you're, you're a Christian and you're a preacher, and boy, they want to impress you. Uh, they, they quit their cussing. They catch themselves a couple times, you know, but they try to act real spiritual. And he was telling me about Tommy Bates over there in Independence. And he said, they, they got such technology over there now. If Tommy's preaching in Georgia, they use AI and they project him where it looks like he's standing on the stage preaching over there in Independence. Exactly. That's what I said. It is deceptive. And why well, don't want a hologram when we can have a man of God? Amen. You know, if I've got to be gone, we got six, seven preachers around here could do some preaching. Huh? Why we got to have a hologram? Let's have an AI of Brother Daryl singing in the choir. That'd be a real blessing. Huh? Yeah. Hmm. What are you trying to say? I'm saying it matters who you run with. There's a lot of people putting deceptive things before you. And by the way, he'll tell you you can't be saved unless you speak in tongues. 
That's all I need to know right there. Uh, uh, he's messed up. So how you know that? I've done funerals over there. I've heard him say it. Uh, I'm just trying to say it matters who you run with when you go to sanctuary. Thank God for true churches. Can I say it matters who you run with in society? Matters who you run with on the job, at school. Uh, matters who you run with out in the community. Uh, uh, boys, listen to me. Uh, you get to running with a fella. Uh, all he talks about is things of the world, and he cusses, and he acts like the world, wants you to take a drink of something you shouldn't take a drink of. You hang out with him long enough, you'll start acting like him. Hmm? Uh, young ladies, you start running around a girl's loose, uh, talk about loose things in the world, talks about how great it is and all that, won't be long, you'll be loose. Matters who you run with. Uh, matters who you run with on social media. Hmm? You talk to Christian, he's a deputy sheriff, you talk to him about how many young people's lives are destroyed because somebody on the internet is proposing as something they're not. Hmm. Hmm. Happens every day in America. Listen, you don't need somebody's approval that has never met you. Hmm. Uh, you need God's approval. You need your family's approval. And your friends here at church, hang out with them. But if you're right with God, who cares what anybody else thinks? See, the world makes you it wants to intimidate you. Say, well, you need to be liked by everybody in the world. Why? A bunch of them are bozos. Uh, they don't even know what gender they are. I want to hang out with them. Don't know what bathroom to use. They got to use pronouns because they don't know he or she. It's not real tough. Huh? You say, what do you call that? Freaks. You hang out with a freak, you're going to be a freak. Charlie, you're going to have rainbow-colored hair. Huh? You come in like that, we're going to slap it out of you. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Wouldn't have to. Your mama beat you to death, boy. Uh, I'm telling you, you don't need their approval. Huh? I cannot understand why 4% of the population dictates what we all ought to think. Right. Say, preacher, what, what should dictate what we think? The Bible. Right. Mm. And if they don't want the Bible, you shouldn't hang out with them. And young ladies, if a young man says he's interested in you, won't come to church with you, you shouldn't be interested in him. Right. Fellas, if a young lady won't come to church with you and sit next to you in church, you ought to never let them sit next to you at schoolhouse or anywhere else. Huh? Of course, Brother Daniel, ladies he goes to school with, you better not be sitting next to them. Yeah, They're sisters. huh? It's homeschooled. I'm just trying to tell you, it matters who you run with. You know why I like this crowd? My kind. We believe alike. We was up here at Chloe's uh, graduation yesterday, and I saw some family I hadn't seen in a while and tried to start up, strike up a conversation. It's hard. They don't believe like I believe. But I can come in here and strike up a conversation with all of you. It was odd. The ones I wanted to avoid wanted to talk to me. Your mama's favorite. Huh? It's just hard. But I can come talk to the colonel. He can start talking about woodworking. I don't know nothing about woodworking, but we'll sit there and have a conversation. Why? Because we have a kindred spirit. Matters who you run with. And I don't know why God had me preach this message this morning, but maybe you're not running with the Lord. But the Lord would like to run with you. He bids everybody to come and believe on him. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He said, if any come to him, he'd no wise cast you out. He wants to run with you. And if you start running with the Lord, he'd change your life. But maybe you're saved and it's been a while since you ran with him. Maybe you've just kind of been running aimlessly. 
why don't you get plugged back into running with the Lord maybe you're here today and you're just coming back from a far country I appreciate that you came to church why don't you get all the way back to the Lord because uh, he sure, sure does miss your fellowship oh we have but he does more maybe you've been diddling dallying with hanging out with somebody that you shouldn't hang out with why don't you come and ask the Lord to help you not to go to that direction why don't you come get some strength this morning it does matter who you run with and when we finish this race we're running I sure want to hear well done thou good and faithful servant you won't get that running with the wrong crowd why don't you make up your mind you're going to run your race to please the Lord and if you please him oh it, it'll show on you and it'll matter and folks want to run with the same one you're running with matters who you run with his name's Jesus are you running with him let's all stand brother Clint come get a song of invitation God spoke to your heart the altar's open the Lord loves you today he cares about you he longs for your fellowship longs to talk with you and walk with you he loves to hear your voice when you call on him he loves spending time with you why don't you let him have his way in your heart right now folks are coming they're picking out a song let's pray Father thank you for the word of God thank you Lord for using my inabilities and God I pray that you just touch hearts I pray especially if there's somebody here not saved God I pray you'd speak to their heart help them to realize Lord it don't matter how they run they're not saved they're going to end up in hell Lord they don't have to go there they can be saved from their sin they can be a new creature in Christ Jesus this morning God I pray they'd come and trust in Jesus Lord I pray for your children Lord you instill something within them to want to please the Lord bless now this invitation speak to hearts well thank you for it in Jesus name Amen Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on daily devotions to sign up today and as always thanks for listening